Join us, friends. Great Scott, Spa Guy. Do they know what we have in store for them? They will if they tighten up. And don't double dribble. To the Grey Ghost, Spa Guy? Exactly, old chum. No time to waste. To the Grey Ghost. We have not a minute to spare. It's showtime, friends. All right, all right, all right. It is the Spa Guy, and it is... Globe trotting with Trey. And we are not wishing Cotton was a monkey, but we know that there are a lot of people that are. Today, we're going to bring in a special guest. He's been with us before, but we're going to do a completely different subject. We're going to bring in Jonathan Pushkar. And Jonathan is a Lego ambassador. And oh, that is Elvis Lego right there. Wow. That's it. One that of my all-time favorite Lego sets. But before we talk about that, thank you guys so much for having me back on the show. It is so good to be here for a second time. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Jonathan, for yeah, being here. Time. So tell us about this Lego journey. How long have you been doing Lego stuff? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, how you can find me online is Mini Superheroes Today. And I'm a Lego content creator. So I show off custom builds that I make. I review Lego sets. I talk about Lego news and history and pretty much anything you can think of with Lego bricks or the brand history I've created content around. So um, I started doing so in March of 2015. Uh, I was a freshman at Belmont University at the time. And I had gotten like the ultimate college schedule ever where I only had classes on Tuesdays and Thursdays. So I had four day weekends the entire time for a whole semester, which would have been awesome my senior year, but not so great my freshman year when you know, you're still making friends and figuring out what to do and blah, blah, blah. So I had a lot of free time. And I thought, you know, I could rewatch Parks and Recreation on Netflix again for the 11th time, or I could use all this free time to cultivate some sort of life scale, hopefully, that could translate into something more. So I had taken a handful of Lego figures with me to college, and I thought, you know what? I'm going to start an Instagram page and start posting every single day just something, because this will teach me the Instagram algorithm of hashtags and how to tag and how to post. And it's a little bit funny in 2023 to talk about that, but wind back the clocks to 2015, all this stuff was still new and developing back then. So I started this challenge to create a piece of content every single day. And here we are eight and a half years later, and I'm still at it, still doing it. And uh, it's opened up so many cool doors to actually work with Lego directly through the Lego Ambassador Network. Um, I don't work for Lego, but I get to work with Lego on some cool projects. But it's also opened the doors to work with huge brands, um, you know, big stores like Walmart and Amazon and things like that. And then even down to some of my favorites, uh, Marvel, of course. I'm a huge Marvel superheroes fan. And I even got to work with the Elvis estate in Graceland, which I'm sure we'll talk about here before too long. So um, it's been an amazing journey. It continues to be not slowing down anytime soon. and. I'm always grateful to get to talk about it. So thank you again for having me. That's very cool. So you showed us the Elvis piece. Let's talk about that. Yeah, sure. So I know we have some people that are listening on audio, and then we, yeah. of course, have some visual people. But what I'm holding up here is a now-retired set. It actually only was out for about a year uh, in 2022. And this is an Elvis mosaic set. It's a part of their Lego art series. And so if I flip it around, you can see that there are nine tiles here they're real big black tiles and on each tile you build a section of a bigger picture and then you assemble it all up and here we have 1950s elvis so this is a really really cool image here um definitely an iconic one for elvis too uh on the four lp fans only actually let me show them in chronological order here and so that's the, next the uh, one. Jail, jailhouse rock picture that was the jailhouse rock red coat right Correct. And then ironically, the photo that they chose for the 60s was also most widely used back in the day as a jailhouse rock promotional mm -hmm. photo. But it does, you know, generally represent uh, the era as well. So it's kind of funny that like the 50s and 60s ones could kind of go back and forth with mm -hmm. which one's which in chronological order, uh, as strange as that is. And then for the 70s, we've got an Aloha shot of Elvis. And I think that this one captures his likeness the best of the three but the four LP fans only is my favorite one. Yeah. Uh, but the Aloha one is just so cool. They got his sideburns, the microphone in there. And it just, they were so much fun to uh, put together and display. But the story of getting to work on slash with these sets 
is even cooler than the sets themselves. So through the Lego Ambassador Network, um, you know, I primarily get to work on things in the Marvel superheroes line and Batman lines and movie lines and things like that. Lego truthfully doesn't do a ton of like music related sets, but uh, my friends in the Ambassador Network that run it and uh, are my reps, if you will, for lack of a better term, they know I'm a big music guy. And so when this Elvis opportunity came up, they reached out to me specially and said, Hey, Jonathan, we've reached out to four of our ambassadors globally that we think could do something interesting with the Elvis mosaic set. Um, would you be interested in doing this? You have full coverage to use the Lego IP and you have special, I guess, grace for lack of a better term to uh, use the Elvis likeness because he's in the set. And they said, there's no limit to your creativity and your imagination of what you can do here. Would you be interested? And uh, after I wiped a couple of tears of joy aside, I was yeah. like, yes, absolutely. That sounds amazing. And so then I'm like, okay, now what? I can do anything with this. What can I do? Well, most Lego sets, as you know, like have some figures in it and their play sets or, you know, their models that you can display. But these Elvis mosaic sets, it's kind of like an art piece you hang on your wall. It just kind of is what it is, right? Mm -hmm. So I was trying to think of something I could really do outside of the box. So I reached out to a really good friend of mine who is also a big Elvis and uh, oldies music fan named Mark Crawford. Uh, he's a music professor over at Tennessee State University. And I told him everything about the project. And he said, well, you know, you could reach out to Columbia here uh, in Nashville where Elvis recorded. It's part of the Country Music Hall of Fame conglomerate um and see if they would do something but he said i think you really need to talk to steven schutz he could kind of point you in the right direction of what you should do so i spoke to steven who if you guys don't know uh he does rockology auctions he's mm -hmm. a big time elvis historian great great guy and he's become a great friend of mine uh since this project and steven i don't know if he knows this or not but he kind of helped me learn my big lesson of 2022 and that was if you don't ask the answer will always be no and he literally said that to me on this phone call. So I was telling him about my ideas and he said, well, you've reached out to Graceland about this already, right? And I'm like, no, why would I reach out to them? They would never. And he said that to me. If you don't ask, the answer will always be no. So I said, OK, let's do this. I'm going to call Graceland and see what I can make happen. So I called them. And I got bounced around like seven or eight times. Oh, you need to talk to this department. Actually, no, not over here. You need to go to this department. And finally, I ended up on the phone with a lady in marketing. And I explained it to her, the whole thing, everything I explained to you, that, you know, Lego has provided these Elvis sets for me. Uh, I'm looking to do the greatest Elvis Grand Slam Lego video ever. Uh, is there any integration we could do with Graceland? And I told her. And she paused and she said, is this a prank call? And I said, no, ma'am, it's not. Why? And she said, are you sure this isn't a prank call? And I said, I, I'm sure it's not. I, you know, what, why do you ask? And she said, we literally had a marketing meeting yesterday where we were talking about all of the new Elvis releases across the entire IP. And we talked about this Elvis Lego set. And we all walked out of the meeting frustrated because we don't have anybody here that does anything with Lego. So we don't know how to tie in with this. And she goes, so I'm going to ask you one more time. Is this a prank call? Nobody set you up for this. I said, no, I, I swear. And she said, okay, well, the answer for me is yes. But there's a couple people up the chain of command that need to say yes before I can. And her and I were speaking, I believe, on a Tuesday late in the day. Uh, and she said, I'm not going to be able to get back to you before the workday closes. But can you be here Friday morning at 10 a.m. if I get the go ahead. And I said, I will be there with bells are ringing and cameras are rolling <laughs> if the answer is yes. She said, okay, keep your eyes peeled tomorrow. I called my dad. My dad's freaking out too. And he was like, you know what? I want to come and be there for this and be a part of it. So he flew from Pittsburgh to Nashville on a hope and a prayer that this was actually going to happen. And don't you know it, what, late in the day, Wednesday, they said, yes, we'd love to have you here on Friday. And we have some special things planned for you here. So my dad and I drove from Nashville to Memphis. It was my very first time ever going to Graceland too. So I mean, to go with my dad and on the behalf of Lego and to do this special project, 
it can't be topped. I'm sorry. I'm I'm gonna take the uh, humbleness out for a second. It's the greatest first Graceland experience that could have ever been tailored for me. So we get to Graceland, and it turns out that the head of branding for EPE, which is the whole Elvis IP basically, just happened to be in Graceland. And he agreed to do an interview talking about how this set got developed. And the special surprise that they had was Angie Marchese from the Graceland Archives came out, and I got to interview her about this set too. So, of course, you can't film anything in the house at Graceland and even with the power of Lego behind me, that's not going to change anything. But they let me set up in the uh, exhibits at Graceland. So we got to film a part of the video in the actual Elvis Museum across the street, which was just insane. So, um, yeah, I got to have all three of these sets here. And Angie talked about how they worked with Lego to pick the images that they did and which ones would translate the best. And so uh, this video is over on my YouTube channel, Mini Superheroes Today. So you can check it out there if you want the full breakdown in history. But long story short, I do have to back up the story just a little bit. After I got the okay from Graceland, um, I just felt like I was on a roll and I was on top of the world. So I also called Sun Studio and I asked if there was any integration that we could do there as well. And I kid you not, cannot make this up. The girl from Sun Studio says, is this a prank call? <laughs> and I said, no, <laughs> I, I'm like, I'm thinking, why is she asking this? And she goes, well, we just had a meeting recently where we were talking about everything going on with the million dollar quartet, you know, because we always talk about ways we can tie in. And we saw this Lego set was coming out, but we don't have anybody here that does anything with Lego. So we, she said the same thing that wow. Graceland said. Wow. And so I said, well, I'm filming all day Friday at Graceland. And she goes, well, Saturdays are pretty busy for us here. But if you could come in on Sunday, I can give you the Sun Studio for 30 minutes and you can film in the studio, just you and the Lego sets if you want. And I'm like, oh my gosh, yes, please, thank you. And so we're going back and forth lining everything up. And again, just feeling on a roll. Uh, we spoke one more time on the phone and I said, well, hey, I'm so looking forward to coming to Sun and doing this. It'll be my first time at Sun. I'm a musician. Is there any, what is the process like for recording at Sun? And she goes, oh man, she goes, I wish I could work a miracle for you, Jonathan. But we're booked out weeks in advance at any given time, sometimes months in advance. And she goes, you know, there's just no way. You're coming in on Sunday. And I said, yes, ma'am. And she said, we have the only opening for the next two months on Sunday night. If you would like to record here, we could give you this one slot because you'll be here. And so I recorded wow. at Sun Studio at the end. So my dad and I drove out, spent all day Friday at Graceland, stayed at the Graceland guest house. They treated us like rock stars. It was absolutely wonderful. Then Saturday, we went all around Memphis. Uh, we drove to the Elvis sites that we could see on our own, including the dojo. But we went to all the houses and things that aren't officially on the record as Elvis stuff. A lot of stuff that I've learned from your channel, Spa Guy mm -hmm. and Trey. Um, <laughs> So super exciting there. And then on Sunday, we did the um, Sun Studio. And it was cool because uh, we wrapped up at Sun Studio. I recorded a cover of That's All Right because, you know, you're there. That's what, what you got to do. do. <laughs> and making the drive home from Nashville or from Memphis to Nashville, it was like maybe 1.30 in the morning or so. And uh, I was driving home and I got to be real. I broke down and got a little misty eyed on the drive home thinking, man, all my heroes have done this exact drive, right. leaving Memphis and driving back to Jackson or driving back to Nashville. They've done this exact drive probably on this exact day, 50, 60 years ago, right now. You know, they just cut something at sun waiting to hear back what it sounded like and it just kind of was like a huge emotional buildup of the whole weekend of finally getting to go to Graceland, eating at Marlowe's three nights in a row because it was so amazing, Sun Studio, and just living this Elvis rockabilly dream for a weekend. It, it was just the absolute most amazing thing ever. And at this point, I really don't know if any Lego experience could ever top it unless Lego made a set that I designed. 
I don't <laughs> think it could ever be topped because it's everything. It's music, it's history, it's Elvis, it's Lego, it's Memphis. It's just everything piled into one. And don't you know, I've been back to Graceland twice since then, so three times. And I've never been on a trip to Graceland. I've never been on a vacation. I've never been on a work trip that went as flawlessly as this trip did for the Elvis Lego set. Not a single hitch. We never had to wait too long in line for anything. I mean, just you name it, not a single hitch. Everything was perfect from start to end. And uh, it's just amazing. And I still look back at it over a year later and just marvel at how perfectly everything played out and to get to use a huge passion of mine in the Lego world to also get to play in the Elvis world and leave my tiny, tiny little mark on the Elvis legacy as one of the only people ever to do a project like this at this scale with Elvis and Lego. Um, it's honestly a huge honor when it all comes around to it. That's well, very like you said, at that moment when you made that call to EP or you made that call to, to Sun Records, you were the only guy that could do this. <laughs> you were the they were looking for you and they had no clue how to find you. And you made the call. That's cool, Jeff. Well, I appreciate that. Yeah, you thank you. And <laughs> yeah, everything just landed the way it is because I grew up in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, for example. Wonderful place to grow up. It was great. But if I lived there and was offered this same opportunity, I couldn't have reached out to Graceland because that would have been crazy to go from Pittsburgh to Memphis and back and da-da-da. Like being in Nashville, just everything lined up. And uh, I can't wait to do it all over again when they make a Johnny Cash Lego set someday. I've, I've already got the wheels greased when that happens. <laughs> wow. They've got to do the man in black, no doubt. I hope, how did, I hope. How did Lego, what did they think of what you did? Well, th I didn't tell them what I was doing until it was done because I was going in with bated breath, hoping and praying that everything would line up. You know, because you know how big, uh, let's call Graceland a museum, an empire, whatever you want to call it, you know how big corporate can be if we get there and say, oh, hey, our person's out sick today. Uh, we can't do this anymore. Sorry. Until it was done, until all the videos were saved to my hard drive without a single issue. I didn't want to say anything and get Lego's hopes too high. And um, through the ambassador network, when we complete a project, we have to fill out like a field report of like what our audience thought, how it went, feedback that they can give to the set designers. And so it was at that point that I really got to like, you know, tell them everything that went on and, you know, thank them and things like that. And if I could say this with as much humility as possible, they really couldn't believe that I like went for the gold and you know they didn't really have an expectation good bad or otherwise of what I was going to do but there's literally nothing more on target on point perfect you could type into chat gpt what's the most perfect lego elvis collaboration you could ever have and I got to live it and got to deliver it and so um it is something I will never stop smiling about I will never stop being grateful for and my biggest hope is that everybody at some point in their life gets to feel the uh, joy, satisfaction, tribute payment, all of these emotions in one. I hope that everybody gets to feel this about something they do in their life at some point, because I have these Elvis mosaics hanging up in my dining room. And so I see them every single day. And I just, e even on a subconscious level, I look at them and think, wow. You know, just the unbelievable opportunity that I got to be a part of that and got to just put my little one little Lego brick piece in the Elvis legacy is just uh, like I said, I'll never stop smiling about it. Never stop being grateful. So it was it was absolutely wonderful. That is cool. Did Lego, I guess, after you did this and they saw that, you, like you said, you went for the grand slam of doing this story. Did they start reaching out to you more? with other, you know, with uh, other things for you to maybe. I can't say like specifically if that happened or not, but Lego has treated me wonderfully since the very first opportunity of us getting to work together. I mean, that's a whole nother conversation, a dream come true to go from being a kid that's built Lego my whole life, loved Lego, loved the way that it um, inspired me creatively to think outside the box, no pun intended, and uh, really flex a creative muscle that you don't often get to in other 
elements of life as a kid or as an adult. Uh, to go from that to actually getting to collaborate with them on levels like this and with things in the Lego Marvel pantheon. And I worked on a Transformers release with them a while back. Just so many cool projects. Um, it's a huge dream come true. It's something I do not take lately at all. And um, it's a big responsibility too. And I'm, I'm always very grateful to be walking that path with them. Yeah, guys. And he has, um, I, I was checking your channel out. You have like animation, Lego animation shows with these Legos, you know, and it's real. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the whole thing. So I tie everything together. I talk about my life as a triangle uh, for our audio only listeners. You'll have to, you know, use your imagination. But I talk about my life as a triangle because I do three things. And sometimes one point of the triangle comes on top. But at any given time, I'm doing all three things. So one, of course, is this Lego journey. Another is my social media uh, business that I run. I do coaching and consulting, basically teaching people how to do um, and implement the things that I've done to find success in their own ways in social media, be it in you know small business, music, influencing, whatever the case may be. And then I also am a music artist. So in my previous appearance on your guys' show, we talked about my music career, uh, and that was a lot of fun. Thank you again for that. But uh yeah it's it's so much fun to get to play in all these different sandboxes and uh hopefully leave a positive dent on the world along the way so it's it's something i don't take lightly and definitely am super appreciative to be walking this path that's cool and you know trey does that he owns a social media company that oh man we got know, all kinds of stuff helps, in helps businesses so show us you have a special thing that you had made for some folks that is kind of you have a business card that you give that is actually a Lego piece, but you had a special one made. And so if Correct. you wanted to show us that. So I'm a huge Elvis fan, if it isn't apparent. <laughs> and after this project, I really got inspired to think, okay, well, how can I uh, have a lasting Elvis connection with my Lego uh, journey here? And so I had these Lego bricks printed up that have a TCB on it. It's kind of like my own take on a TCB. They're yellow Lego bricks, closest you can get to gold. And basically, I give this out to people that help me create videos, that help me along the journey, just like Elvis would with his TCBs. Basically, if you help the show stay on and you help the show happen, uh, you get a mini Superheroes Today <laughs> TCB. So That is very um, cool. It's his TCB. I, I got you. Guys. <laughs> yeah, like it's that. my own little way to do it. I haven't figured out how to turn him into like a necklace yet. But yeah, I'm yeah. sure there's a way. I'm sure yeah, there's a, a way. Necklace. I so you were necklace. recently uh, on your Lego journey, you were actually over in Europe. So tell yes. us about that. How did it take you to Europe? Yeah. And of course, there's going to be an Elvis connection because there always is. Yeah. Um, Lego is headquartered in Europe. A real brief history on the company for those that don't know. Lego actually started out as a wooden toy company. They made yo-yos in the 1930s. And because of the uh, import and export tariffs, after the world war they really couldn't expand outside of denmark so eventually literally every kid in denmark had two yo-yos you only got two hands so you don't need more than two yo-yos so uh ole kirk christensen who was the founder of lego ended up cutting the yo-yos that were left over in half and started using those on wheels for things like pull along animals like ducks and dogs and chickens and then also on like police cars and fire trucks that were all wooden toys. And eventually that turned into like small sort of like Hot Wheels type toys. Um, and then those developed where they started to sell bricks that you could build some scenery to go around the cars. And then that, it, this is a very condensed history of Lego. Those bricks turned into what we know today as uh, Lego sets that you see at Target and Walmart and everywhere you shop. So. It's pretty amazing how in their nearly 100-year journey of toy making, uh, they've really come a long way and developed so far. And they're still headquartered in Billund, Denmark, which is not really a big area of Denmark. Pretty much the only industry there is the fact that Lego headquarters is there and Lego Land uh, and Lego House, which is kind of like Lego's fan experience hub. Um, I actually just got to work with them on a project as well, which was super fun. It's over on my Instagram now. But uh, long story short, um, I got to go to Billund to the Lego headquarters to start working on some projects for 2024 with them through the Ambassador Network. 
and I promised there was an Elvis connection. When I landed in Billund, we ended up having that entire day off. So we drove a little over an hour north up to Randers, Denmark, and that's where the Memphis Mansion is, which is a really, really awesome Elvis experience in Denmark of all places. Who would have thought? It's owned by Henrik Knudsen, who's a friend of mine now, and he built a replica of Graceland from the outside, which is amazing. But they also built a replica of the Tupelo birthplace, which is just like, it's just so random. You can't help but laugh when you talk about it because it's so cool. I absolutely love it. And um, yeah, there's an Elvis museum inside. There's a really great restaurant inside too. It was one of the better meals I had in Denmark. Um, and yeah, Henrik was so nice, so welcoming. And uh, I always try to get a little bit of music history in everywhere I go. Um, and this one was perfect to get to go to the Memphis Mansion. I already can't wait to go back next year. It's a great museum. It's awesome. It's very cool. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I've never done that before. But I know the Denmark. It's the Denmark. What's it called? The Billy is. What's the mansion called? The Denmark. It's called the Memphis Mansion. Memphis Mansion, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Memphis yeah Mansion. I think they, all, they have a music venue there, right? Yes, they do. Yeah. Uh, they have an event space upstairs. They built a Johnny Cash Museum as an oh. annex on the outside now. And it's a Johnny Cash Museum, but there's also Jerry Lee and Carl Perkins stuff in there, too. So I was in heaven, guys. It was absolutely awesome. I had, I had so much fun. And, um, yeah, it was really cool because, like, 28 i just turned 28 actually and uh not a ton of people in my age group in the lego world are also elvis fans and so when i was telling people that i was hanging out with like oh yeah i got here and drove an hour north to go to the memphis mansion they're like why and i'm like because it's elvis i wouldn't miss it for the world it was awesome i, I was blown away he has the blue hawaii shirt display there yeah oh my gosh that was so it was breathtaking he has elvis's gibson dove acoustic guitar oh my gosh that was so cool to see in person it was incredible yeah he's got a cool uh, place up there yeah it's amazing guys let's do a trio trip let's go the three yeah. of us yeah I mean, i've been to denmark but i didn't get to go to the mansion when i was there we were there one day and uh we were coming from finland and stayed in denmark overnight and then went to amsterdam or went oh, cool. to the Netherlands, yeah. That was my path this time. I went to Paris for two days on the way in. I was in Denmark for a week. And then I went to Amsterdam for two days on the way out. What are the odds? So what did you do in Paris? Uh, honestly, I just am a huge history fan. And so I just went to go and chill and see all the historic sites. Did you um, go I to did the a graveyard? I did not go to the graveyard. Okay. Graveyards kind of creep me out, if I'm being yeah. honest. And just... Okay, well. You know, it, hey, you can find famous people there. That's <laughs> true. I, mean, I have been to Carl Perkins' grave. That's the only famous person grave I've ever like intentionally gone to. But uh, I don't know. When it comes to graveyards, I kind of have an Austin Powers approach. It's not my bag, baby. So I'm just <laughs> kind of leaving be, and that's that's its own thing. But uh, no, I did the Louvre Museum in Paris. Uh, we, we went all over. It was yeah. absolutely incredible. But uh, yeah, it was it was great, and I just love to uh get out there and see the world because it's a big big world and you know how about you any of the elvis stuff in paris how much elvis stuff is there in paris well you know he stayed at the prince de gaulle the hotel prince de gaulle right off the champs Elysees, mm -hmm. and he ate at the um the restaurants right there on the corner um called um um i've got a video about it but there's photos of him there and he would go okay. to the lingo club you know, he stayed there for weeks at the yeah. time. They would go on vacation for several weeks. Yeah, there's a photo wow. of him on that corner, right? Yeah, he's right there at the corner. Yeah, Foquette's is the name of the restaurant. And he, uh, there's a funny story that Rex tells where they were at the hotel and they were like, well, you know, we want to go get something to eat. And they said, uh, some of the guys, and they were like, well, Elvis can't go to the restaurant. And he went, we're in Paris. Nobody cares about Elvis. <laughs> and they were like, I don't, I don't think that's right. And they, they finally got him talked into it. So Elvis is wearing wow. an army uniform. You know, you've probably seen the photos. And uh, so they go down there and they're sitting out in front of Foquette's eating. And somebody recognizes Elvis. And suddenly there's just this mob. No way. And Rex said that he got in the front. And I think he told me it was, um, 
I think it was Lamar. One of them got in the front, one of them got in the back, but it was him. Uh, it was Elvis uh, Red, Lamar, Charlie, Rex. All those guys kind of got around Elvis and pushed him through the crowd and got him back to the hotel. Wow, I had no idea. See, they thought this, this is why you always cares. search for the spa guy and globe trotting <laughs> with Trey before you go somewhere That's to right. see if there's Elvis history. That's I right. just assumed, and eh, Paris is far enough from Germany, probably not going to be any of his history, yeah. but that's what I get for yeah. assuming. Yep. That's and uh, he get. stayed at the Hotel Prince de Gaulle, which I was, uh, my wife wants to go to Paris. And we started looking at, at pricing uh, for, you know, you, you've got regular hotels you could stay at. And I thought, well, I want to stay at the Hotel Prince de Gaulle. That's where Elvis stayed at. And you would not believe for us to stay there for like five days was $16,000. <laughs> Whoa! That's out. That's out. Oh my gosh! I guess he could go walk around the lobby. Yeah, I did go in the lobby, and they had um, there's Elvis did um, he did some interviews there, um, in the lobby, and there's actually some photos of him where some of the tile in there's like a restaurant in the middle that's open air restaurant in the in the center, and I filmed all that stuff. But there's different photos, you lineups and things. You can find photos of him out on the sidewalk in front of it and where different. So there's a lot of different. I was able to do a lot of lineups. The one thing that I missed was the Lido Club. Where it, There's a Lido Club across the street now, but it's not where it was when they were there. So I figured out the address where it was and went in the building, but I didn't realize it was in the basement. And ah. so I searched the building and even tried to find someone that worked there to tell me, but it was like a, it was a holiday. So there was nobody working for me to find. And so I ended up not being able to figure it out. So the next time I go back, I want to go down in the basement, but that's where the, there's photos of him in the Lido club in the basement there as well. No kidding. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, remember I, had that, there. I found that funny Charlie Hodge story from his book that happened down there. Remember that yeah. I told you about? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of interesting things happened there. And I think they vacationed there two weeks at the time, two different times from my memory. And uh, but Rex went with them, and of course I knew Rex and uh, Charlie. All those guys went, and, and there's you know there's a lot of photos of them there. And the story I think uh, is the story you're talking about, Trey, where they called. You want to tell it real quick? It was about the uh, you know there was a guy in there dressed like a woman. Oh, well, that's not the one I was thinking about. <laughs> I don't know. We want to talk about that. Yeah, so that's not what I was thinking about. What I was thinking about was um, they called and said, hey, are the girls up there? And they went, well, yeah. He said, well, we need them. The show's trying to start. <laughs> they almost had all the girls. He had all the girls from the club. <laughs> the they were supposed to be working at the Lido Club. Yeah, that's one of Lamar's wow. light stories. Yeah, that's one of Lamar's stories. So it's oh, just gosh. some interesting stuff. And, um, and, uh, I just, I, I love going over there. Now I was only there one day. I, I took a train in from the Netherlands, uh, through Belgium and went in and I uh, filmed all my Elvis stuff, went to the graveyard that I was talking about where, um, uh, the lead singer for the doors, uh, he's buried in Jim, that Morrison. Person, Jim Morrison. I went to Jim Morrison's grave and a couple of other things and then got on the train and headed back. And so I wasn't there very long, but I, so I had to have everything ready. Boom, 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 boom. You know, not oh, yeah, those out. content days. I know it from the Lego world where you just yeah. got to be ready. It's like, man, if you start getting five, 10 minutes behind all the dominoes start falling. That's exactly right. That's yeah. exactly right. Well, man, hopefully Bill, Billy, the, the, uh, where that club was, that basement is still there and it hasn't changed much. Yeah. And I hope so. Now uh, the, the, the floors there were like, it was like a, um, it was like a flea market in there. And it wasn't like, a, like a flea market, like traditional flea market that we would have where it's, 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 uh, junk, that kind of stuff. It was more like, um, like an antique store, I guess is a better, a better parallel, where a person may own a space and they have antiques for sale in that space. Yeah, yeah. But the whole thing was like that now um, upstairs. And there was several floors, but it was just interesting to be there and walk up and down the street. And I also missed another thing. There's photos of Elvis down the street from Foquette's on the Champs-Élysées standing in front of a building. And I didn't, I didn't capture those things. It's almost yeah. directly across from the Lido club. So I, there was some things I missed. And it and helped. Here I thought I saw everything I wanted to see in Paris, and, and now you got to go back. 
Yeah, I gotta so, go back, I guess. Uh, and that's one of the things when when we're filming, um, and even when Trey and I are filming together, or when I'm filming by myself, a lot of times I go film something, and then I'll go back to my room and I'll start studying what I just saw and go, man, I missed that, or I missed that. So a lot of times I go back and film again, mm-hmm. you know. And uh, there's just things that you just if you're in and out fast, you're just going to miss some things. I got to go to Bad Nauheim twice. So I was able to capture in, uh, a lot of things the second time that I missed the first time and also realize how close together things were. Um, and in my mind, you've seen the the Bad Nauheim photos where Elvis is standing on the bridge. There's a metal bridge and there's a concrete bridge and he's, he's petting a horse and petting a dog in front of a church. All those things are really close together. No but kidding. but when I filmed it the first time, I went to the church and then drove like a giant circle around to the bridges. They were literally, if you're standing in front of the church and you walk down the sidewalk to your left, the first bridge is right there. It's, it's So it's one of those things where you just learn about it, you know. So anyway, let's get back to the Lego stuff. So tell us some upcoming projects. You got any cool things coming up? Well, that's the real trick, isn't it? The coolest stuff is the stuff I can't talk about yet. <laughs> oh. <laughs> because basically the way the ambassador program works is, uh, you know, they'll send us stuff, but it's on embargo. And so I can't speak about things until that embargo passes. Ironically, the thing that I'm thinking about by the time this episode comes out, I think the embargo will have passed. But, hey, yeah. I'm, I'm going to be yeah, an honest hey, person hey. and not break embargo. But... Um, there's always cool stuff to be working on. So on my Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube, um, I'm posting pretty much daily, daily on Instagram every day for sure, but YouTube and TikTok several times a week too. So there's always something new and fun to find. Um, but yeah, I'm just, uh, I'm really gearing up for next year. It is going to be another expensive year of collecting Lego because they all are, um, but yeah, no, I'm actually working on a Lego ideas project right now. I can't talk about this because it's not out yet either. But basically what Lego ideas is, is you can submit an idea for a Lego set. So let's say I want to make a Rickenbacker guitar. I'm not mm-hmm. going to, but let's say I wanted to. I would build and design this in Lego. And then I put it up on Lego ideas and if you get 10,000 people to support the idea, then that goes to a committee at Lego and they actually look into turning it into an actual product. Hmm. If that happens, then you get to work with the design team and making the decisions of what pieces to use and what colors and what size. And you literally get to be a Lego designer on your own set. And so a friend of mine, he and I are working on a music themed set right now probably about 40 ish percent done but it's not quite there yet the plan is to get it out by the end of november so if you're watching this and you're intrigued in a music lego ideas idea check my pages because i've probably posted about it by now but as of the recording of this it's not been posted so i can't officially say what it is yet but um yeah we're gonna need all the support we can to get to the ten thousand, and it should be a good time when when it does get released uh for voting so let me ask you this about Lego. Are there, is there Lego scale like train scales? Because I know that there's Legos with, you know, the traditional Legos that I think of, but are there scaled Legos for larger things? Yeah, uh, within a couple of different definitions. So uh, if you can picture what a Lego figure looks like, like a yeah. Lego minifigure, It'll just I don't fit have on to have that one within dot. reach. But yeah, yeah like a, fit on the dot. Correct, yeah. So yeah. they've got the legs that are two studs high. They have the two holes in the back. Then they have the torso, the head, and like a hair piece or a hat or whatever. Uh, I would say that probably the vast majority of Lego sets are built in what's called minifigure scale. So it's built to make sense with those figures. So like a coffee shop with a door that a figure can walk through or you know, like um, they did the Daily Bugle from Spider-Man a couple of years ago. And so it's like a office building that's built to scale with the lego figure so most fig most sets from lego um are built to be paired with lego figures but then they'll do other things that are like uh bus like they did a black panther bust a couple years ago they just did a chewbacca like statue uh that's about yay big 
Um, they did a life size, well, not quite life size, but like a pretty big Captain America shield earlier this year. Last year they did Thor's hammer. Um, and so it goes on and on and on that there are different scales per se, but I'd say the only consistent scale is like when you're talking about like minifigure play scale, that it makes sense for the Lego figure to interact with that world. I see. Because I remember at Disney Springs, they had, it seemed like it was a giant dinosaur. And and I don't think that thing was made out of normal size Legos. From oh, so at that point, I know what you're talking about at Disney Springs. It's yeah. that like sea serpent that's yeah. in the water with his yeah. head sticking yeah. out. Giant. And those are made of real Lego bricks. Now, what really? the trick? Yeah. What the trick is though is it's mostly, for the most part, just what you can see on the outside is the Lego brick. For something like that that needs to be able to storm the weather, I bet the inside might actually be um, like actually something molded like maybe even concrete or something like that mm -hmm. but when you go to like a lego store and you see like a big statue in a lego store or at disney springs for example they have like a giant hulk that you can yeah. get your picture with um the inside of that is actually built with duplo bricks which are like the bigger bricks for you know very young builders like mm -hmm. ages one to three mm -hmm. and they do that for structural reasons because those do not like come apart from being shaken or anything so mm -hmm. if you could picture that giant hulk uh that you could get your picture with his entire skeletal structure if that makes sense would more than likely be made with duplo bricks and then they build the actual Lego bricks just on the part that you can see. And then they do glue those because, you know, oh, kids and that. people are going to be climbing all over them. So, so um, what does Lego mean? So Lego is actually a shortened version of the phrase Legot, which is Danish for play well. Oh, okay. So there you go. Never knew that. That's yep. interesting. Legot. 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 So they took off the D and T of Legot and Legot. made it. Thank you very much. That's that very cool. I, I, I learned something new. I've learned a lot. <laughs> and likewise, now I need to go back to Paris to see all these Elvis sites. That's, true. That's, that's, true. Right. that's the great thing about Elvis this channel. Elvis was there, no doubt about it. That's it. That's the great thing about this channel and your guys' channels. And if I could say so about mine too, is that you always learn something new and there's always a takeaway. That's right. And it's, and it's a lot of fun. It's fun to travel. It's fun to learn new things, meet new people. Um, this Elvis thing has, has, well, I met you because of the Elvis stuff. And I really, I met you because of the Paul McCartney stuff, but I wouldn't have done that if it hadn't been for the Elvis stuff. So it all, it all ties together in one way or another. It really does. And uh, I'm grateful to be on the life path I am. And I'm grateful that it brought me to you guys. So thank you so much for having me uh, on the show for a second time. What a big honor. And it's always a pleasure to talk with you guys. Thank you, man. It's an honor for for uh, us to have you on, and and we're we're thankful for that. And I just told I told Trey, I said, man, he's got these two these two really cool things. I think we could do two different two things with that. I think it would be interesting. So um, the tell us just uh, I know that the Elvis thing probably was one of the biggest things you did with Lego. Outside of that. Yeah. What's the most meaningful or eventful Lego thing that you've done? Hmm. That's a big question. The Elvis thing is always going to be number one. But if I can be honest with you, uh, there are Lego conventions all around the world. And uh, I am very fortunate. I think I've been to four or five this year alone in all different parts of the world. And um, if I could be completely honest with you, the biggest most moving coolest thing that i've gotten to be a part of is honestly meeting people that watch my channel mm -hmm. um i can think of a couple different instances like i spoke with a mom that she was talking about her son and her son's friend and they said you know hey we're very protective of what we let our kids watch just from the standpoint of what lesson they're going to take away from it because there's a lot of things you can watch out there that don't add to your life this was this mom's words. Mm -hmm. And she said, we know that we can put your channel on. And even if our boys are just watching videos about Lego content or reviews, the energy and the positivity that you put out lets us know that we can put any video from your channel on in front of our boys 
and they're going to feel inspired that they can believe in themselves to build something a little better than the day they did before. And they're telling me this and I'm like, well enough, you know, because you guys being content creators, we spend so much time on our own in front of our computer screens, editing, dragging, copy pasting, just to make these videos. And until you get out there in the real world and you get to interact with people that watch your videos, you never truly can have your thumb on the pulse of the effect it may have on people. And that's just one story that comes to mind that, um, you know, it kind of makes it all worth doing because um, I'm not naive to the fact that there are definitely people that are going to look at my channel and what I do and be like, oh, he sits around and talks about Lego all day, you know, must be easy. It's not easy. You spend a lot of time researching, you know, on your own, the sacrifices you have to make to have this, you know, ev everything in life is trade-offs, but to be able to talk with people uh, from all over the country. And now that I've been to some conventions out of the country, all over the world, and just get to hear the effect that some of my decisions and making content has had on people, that makes it all worth it. So in a way, the next coolest thing that I've gotten to do with my channel has nothing really to do with Lego. And it's really just to know that, um, you know, even if it's just for the handful of people that have been open and vulnerable to tell me these things that it's meant something to them, that makes it worth it. Because if that person is a little nicer to the person at the gas station or to somebody at school or when they go to work, if they're a little bit nicer and then that can ripple out to more people, um, you know, that's what we're here to do. It's a tough world. It's a hard place to be. It's a hard place to keep your head up at all times. But uh, if you can even just give a spark and help light the torch for somebody else, that's what we're here for, man. And I, I know that's maybe not the answer you were thinking. No, I that's not. That's a great. It really is great. from the bottom of my heart. It's yeah. That's a point. Why I keep doing it. And, that's and we, point. we experience the same stuff, you know, um, we get, there's times when, when you get beat down, you know, there's people that want to be negative about stuff and that kind of stuff, but that a lot, most of the time at that point where I'm beat down, where somebody's been negative, somebody pops up and goes, man, I was sick and your videos got me through that time of my life. Or, you know, there's those things that, that help you to, to, to understand really why you're doing what you're doing. You know, it makes, it makes a big difference. And so, you know, we welcome feedback from people, especially positive feedback because there's so much negative out there. That's yeah. true. Yeah, it's true. Like say, you know, we do the work, Jonathan, you know, we do the work. You don't see how it affects anyone until they come up to you and recognize you and tell you their story. So yeah, yeah. that's, that's the part of like, okay, well maybe you're doing something right. Yeah. That's the payoff. Cause it's I, reciprocal I, because hopefully those people get to hear this side of our conversation too, to know that, you know, what they say about us means an equal amount to us. Life is all about reciprocity and, um, you know, the energy that you walk into a room with has a big effect on how your experience is going to be. And uh, I just always try to show up as the best person I can be. And hopefully that just leaves a little bit of a spark for somebody else to feel a little more positive or uplifted through their day. So, um, that's yeah, that's that's all there is to it. That's the secret. That is. That's that's great stuff, man. I appreciate you. This has been awesome. It's been great. Thank all you guys right. so much. Yeah. It's been great. Thank you. We'll Thank see y'all next time. Tighten up every chance you get. And don't double dribble. Ever. <laughs>